Hello and welcome to today's lesson on gamma ray emission, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to be able to detail the effect of gamma ray emission. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to detail how the nucleus changes with radioactive decay. To find gamma radiation, then describe what happens to an unstable nucleus that emits gamma radiation. So we're going to look at a 3.8.1.4 nuclear instability. So let's consider the unstable nucleus 99MO42. Now this nucleus undergoes beta minus decay. So what would our decay equation be for this process? So we'd have this particular equation. So in terms of nuclei, our MO, our molybdenum, K okay, turns into technetium whilst emitting an electron and an antineutrino. Now we can actually visualize this decay in terms of particles. So you can see we've got our unstable nucleus turning into a more stable nucleus, an electron and an electron antineutrino. Now if we just focus on the change of the nucleus in the decay, we've got our starting or mother nucleus and then we've got our our finishing or daughter nucleus. Now in certain decays the daughter nucleus will have more energy for that nucleus than if that nucleus was just existing normally. So in this case we would say the daughter nucleus is said to be excited. So a nucleus is in an excited state when it's above the ground state which is the state that a, a nucleus of this particular type would have normally. So in this example, technetium is excited. So this means that the nucleus of technetium contains more potential energy than it normally does. So in these types of decays, it's more appropriate to show the decay in terms of energy level diagrams. So energy transitions of nuclei during radioactive decays are shown with energy level diagrams. Now on an energy level diagram, the vertical axis shows the relative energy of each level. So the lower down the axis, the lower the energy of the nucleus. Now in this case the arrow is going down because the technetium is more stable but not completely stable so it exists with less energy so it's lowered down on our energy level diagram. So we've increased our stability. Now it's not completely stable yet, it's just more stable than the starting nucleus at the beginning of the decay. So we would say in this case that the technetium nucleus is considered to be excited. So the technetium nucleus has less energy than the molybdenum nucleus, yet it will have more energy than when technetium nuclei exist normally. So what would happen to this excited nucleus? Well, what would happen is the nucleus in an excited state would eventually return to its ground state. Now this is represented on an energy level diagram as an arrow going down as the ground state has less energy than the excited state. So when the nucleus transitions down to the ground state, a photon of energy is emitted much like when an excited atom de-excites. Now to work out the energy of the photon emitted from the nucleus, we can use the same principle as discussed as when when we looked at excited atoms. So the energy released in terms of the photon, which is equal to HF, because that is our equation for a photon energy, is equal to E2 minus E1. So it's the difference in energy from the excited state to the ground state. So the change in energy is equal to the amount of energy that is released in the decay. Now certain nuclei take a long time to transition down to the ground state. These excited state states are called metastable states, literally translating into consistently unstable and are denoted with an M on our energy level diagrams and our nuclear decay equations. Now, for example, in this case, the technetium stated below has a half-life of six hours, so it exists for some time in its excited state. Now, gamma emission should take a relatively short time to occur compared to alpha and beta emission, so metastability is measured against other gamma emissions. So, as a note, in this case, it's all relative, because whilst it would exist in a metastable state for six hours, the molybdenum has a half-life of 67 hours, so you can see that actually that this metastable state does not exist as long as, it, as the time would take for the beta decay to occur. 
Now, technically, a metastable state can be any isotope which has an excited state for longer than one nanosecond. So the most famous example of an isotope which exists in metastability is technetium-99. So technetium-99 is made when molybdenum undergoes beta decay. So this technetium remains in an excited state for some time. Like mentioned before, it has a half-life of about six hours before decaying by a gamma emission to the ground state. So therefore, we can say that this excited state of technetium is said to be metastable. So this technetium can be separated from the molybdenum and can be used in medicine and its most common use is in a medical tracer. So metastable states are useful as those isotopes can be separated after their first emission and then can be solely considered a gamma source. Because as you'll be aware, gamma emission can only happen after either alpha or beta decay. So if you don't want those products to be produced, you would have your metastable stable um, substance to be used as a gamma source because they'll not emit any more alpha or beta because they've already done that. So like we mentioned in a previous lesson, the emission of gamma radiation does not change the position of a nucleus on the graph of N against Z. However, there are there can be more than one possible route to the ground state through different energy level combinations. So this means that the that different nuclei can carry out the same transition to the ground state, but can produce photons with different energies. So our example here is the decay of magnesium into aluminium. Aluminium, the nucleus, is then still excited, and then it will decay into its ground state. But there are two possible routes of decay from the excited aluminium to the ground state aluminium. So as you can see, in the different possible routes, the total energy emitted remains constant, however, However, it can be split over a variety of gamma photons. So let's have a look at this example in a little bit more detail. So let's have a look at the possible gamma emissions which can take place after the aluminium has then uh, been produced but is still excited. So there are two possible paths that the aluminium can carry out to de-excite and no longer be metastable. So path one, as shown on the diagram on the screen, indicates that it could just emit one full photon of 1.02 mega electron volts, whilst you can also produce two photons, one of 0.19 mega electron volt photons, okay, and 0.83 mega electron volts of energy in that particular photon. So in the first pathway, you could produce one photon, but in the second pathway, you could produce two photons. So there's two possible ways in which the excited aluminium can decay into the stable ground state later on. Now, just to note that the total energy across both pathways is the same so if you add up the two photons from that second pathway they will equal that the energy of the one photon in pathway one. Now let's have a look at a few examples. So if we look at this particular example of cobalt decaying into, into nickel, okay, which of the following isotopes will emit the gamma photon? Well it's the nickel that emits the gamma photons as it's the nickel which is in the metastable state. So it wouldn't be true to say that the cobalt emits gamma photons, it's in fact the, pr the product in that original beta decay process which is the nickel. The next question would ask how many possible decay paths in this, in this particular example does nickel have to de-excite? So the answer would be nickel has two possible paths to de-excite. It can either, okay, um, in pathway one, go straight from 0.55 MeV all the way down to zero MeV from your excited state to your ground state, or by pathway two, it could do that in two steps. It could drop from 0.55 MeV to 0.38, and then from 0.38 MeV to zero MeV. So the next question could possibly ask you what are the energies of the possible photons produced in this particular decay process? Well by pathway one you would have one photon of 0.55 MeV being produced because that's the difference between the excited state and the ground state whilst in pathway two you'd have one photon of 0.17 MeV which is the difference between 0.55 MeV and 0.38 MeV and you'd have one photon of 0.38 MeV which is the difference between the 0.38 38 MeV level and the 0 MeV level. Now to note, if you notice that in pathway 2, if you added those two photons up, they'd have the same energy as that one photon in pathway 1. 
Now, a more challenging question could ask you to work out the wavelengths of photons which could be possibly produced, which links us back into that first topic you did in A-level physics, particles and radiation. So pathway 1 will produce one photon of 2.26 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. How do you work that out? Well, you would say E equals HF. So therefore, if you know what E is, you would convert that into joules. You would then work out what the frequency is in hertz and then use the equation C equals F lambda, where C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, to then work out what lambda would be. Remember, all these photons produced in this particular emission process are traveling at the speed of light, whilst you'd use the same methodology of pathway 2, and you get two photons, one of one of wavelength 7.31 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and another one of 3.27 times 10 to the minus 12 meters being produced. So what have we looked at in this particular lesson? We've looked at questions that may use nuclear energy level diagrams. We've looked at the existence of nuclear excited states, including gamma ray emissions and applications of this, such as the use of technetium as a gamma source in medical diagnoses. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we'll be able to detail nucleus, how nuclei change with radioactive decay, define what, what gamma radiation is, and then describe what happens to an unstable nucleus that emits gamma radiation. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on gamma ray emission, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.